All right, my friends, amazingly, I have solved this problem, I hope, I hope. I mean, I, I discovered that I, could, I couldn't download this. Um, and for some reason, this Hebrew books was blocked, but I did download it on my cellular phone. So I downloaded it and then I just took a picture of it and I emailed it to myself and here it is. <clears throat> All right, let's go <clears throat> return to our topic. Our topic is that there were the three <clears throat> the families of Levi, which were Gershon, Kahat, and Marori. And Gershon, Kahat, and Marori, they carried, they carried different <clears throat> uh, parts of the tabernacle in the 42 journeys that the Jewish people took in the desert. And because this is written in the Torah, so this must be very important to us right now. Even though we're, <clears throat> the Jews traveled in the desert, this was like 3,300 years ago. Says the Rebbe, the fact is we're traveling in the desert right now. <clears throat> and the desert is what we call exile. And exile means the Jews have totally lost their identity and that the world is totally unaware of the creator of the world. And so they're unaware of what <clears throat> truth is. They don't know what true love is. They don't know what true values are. <clears throat> they don't know what the purpose of life is, why we're alive. The miracle of life, the value of life, the preciousness <clears throat> they don't know. That's called exile. <clears throat> and it's the job of the Jewish people to, <clears throat> to dispel and to eliminate and to transform this exile <clears throat> to truth, the revelation. Now, how do we do that? That is, we can learn from the traveling of the tabernacle in the desert. The desert is <clears throat> compared as a metaphor for the exile that we're in now. And the tabernacle is the service of the Jewish people to God. And the traveling, moving around, this is how we can <clears throat> remove this terrible state of ignorance and suffering and confusion and frustration, which is called the exile that the whole world is in. <clears throat> And this is especially done by three <clears throat> aspects, three, did I say three approaches? Oh, and mainly these three different types of approaches. This is in <clears throat> prayer. So let's see if we can do this. This is this thing is working, but I don't know why it's working here. I don't know exactly. Oh, let's see this. Here we go. <clears throat> so let's do a little bit. We did this. Oh, 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 oh. <clears throat> so let's skip just a little bit. The three families of Levi that was Gershon, Kahat, and Murray. <clears throat> this represents, like we said, three different attitudes or aspects of our soul that we can arouse to relate to God. <clears throat> Step number one, says the Rebbe, is Merari. What's Merari? Merari means bitterness. They're the ones that carry the boards that made up the walls of the tabernacle and the poles that held up the curtains <clears throat> which surrounded the outer courtyard of the tabernacle. And the thing that both these have in common, the boards and the posts is that they're standing, standing. <clears throat> so the Rebbe says this represents getting away from bad, standing, 
waiting, delaying, not to move in the wrong direction. Realizing you're on the wrong street, you're on the wrong train, <clears throat> you're on the wrong <clears throat> path. Realizing that your life is not going where it's supposed to go, you got the wrong goal, so you stop. Stop. That's mainly called the lower fear. What does it mean, the lower fear? Right, the guy's driving in this train, what is he's reading his newspaper, happily going, and suddenly announces, next stop, Chicago. He says, Chicago? How did how I get to, I, I want to go from New York to Florida. How did I get to Chicago? Please watch your step. And uh, the, uh, I say, by the way, as you leave the step for Chicago, next stop will be <clears throat> San Francisco. So what? I'm going, I'm in the wrong place. I'm on the wrong place. What's going on over here? I'm trying to run. stop. One second. Stop the train. Ah. That's what's called the lower fear. A person realizes <clears throat> that his whole life is in, going in the wrong direction. And so he stops. <clears throat> lower fear means <clears throat> that you're avoiding something bad. You realize you're doing something bad and you stop. That's the first step. I got something in my throat here. <clears throat> That's the first step. And that you realize you're doing something bad, that's symbolized by the poles or the posts or the boards that you stop. This is the beginning, this is the level of bitl aratzon, of negating your will. That crushing, that's what it means, the, the posts that are standing, bitl aratzon, that you stop your will, you stop what you're doing. This is what's called fear. That's what it means. Kulam omdim, like the angels. It says all the angels. They are all standing. I'm controlling this pretty good. Pretty good. That's the I think of the angels that they're standing in the highest of the world, worlds and they're listening. We did this yesterday. That's the service of Morari. That there's they carry these boards that they, and in order one want to come to boards. And this boards mean that a person suddenly realizes in his life that well I thought everything is okay and it's not. In order to come to this service, this is by means of bitterness, that you have to start making a, how do you say, an accounting of your life. Call you Mecheldo, everything that he's done, which a person suddenly realizes that the most of what I've done <clears throat> is pure egotism. And by means of this, more rachamim rabim, he arouses great mercy from God. Now, this is a very basic principle in Judaism, and that is that God is good. He's really good. He's infinitely more good than we can possibly imagine. And one of the signs of him being good is that he creates us. And not only he creates us, he even gives us something more valuable, if you want to call it that. I mean, created, he gives us responsibility that we're worth something. Right? A person that's created just does, he hasn't got a job and he doesn't got a purpose. and he That's called depression. <clears throat> doesn't appreciate anything, doesn't, God gave us responsibility. Our, our responsibility is, first of all, to be, have gratitude, to appreciate life. And what if we don't, what if we're in the wrong way? <clears throat> so that's it. Now, the fact of the matter is, is, it is really impossible for a person to improve himself. It's impossible. You can rearrange things. You can change, you, know, you, you instead of buying a motorcycle, so you buy a car, instead of, you know, living in this city and live in another city. But to really improve <clears throat> your connection to God, you can't do it. And really, if you think about it, you can't really do anything. <clears throat> Nothing. We can't do anything. We're stuck. Unless God helps you. If God helps you, then you can do bad things. Bad things you can certainly do on your own. You can go against the Torah 100% on your own. Drive on the wrong side of the street. You're the boss. right? You're in all the newspapers. You make it on the headlines. There's something special. If you drive on the right side of the street, you're just like everybody else. It's not exciting life, but you're doing the right thing. It says but the fact of the matter is, and to do the right thing, right? It's not the same thing as driving on the wrong side of the street. You drive on the wrong side of the street, you see you're on the wrong side. Everybody's going against you. <clears throat> but here, everybody's going on the wrong side of the street. The whole world is going wrong. The whole world is wrong. 
in order for you to go against the stream, in order to defy selfishness and do what's good, it's impossible, impossible without the help of God. And God likes to help. He's just waiting for you to ask him. <clears throat> That's the idea of the lower fear. The lower fear means a person realizes, well, I'm stuck. I can't get out of this. God help me. <clears throat> and God always helps. And by means of this, it arouses great mercy that a person can actually defy the world. He can actually negate his will. Like it says, <clears throat> but it's called Dodi in the end of the Matzah's Mororim. Okay, another place you have the bitter herbs we eat on Passover. He named Zeph, and this comes afterwards another level. What's the next level? You can't be in this thing of <clears throat> negating yourself and realizing how, that I'm the wrong direction. That's just that's just the preparation. The thing is to get on the right direction, and that's the thing of love. Ahav of Ratzon Lashem, love and will to God. The Bechim is Kalos nefesh, what's called expiring of the soul. And this is the whole idea of the Ureos. This is what Gershon carried. Gershon carried the curtains. It says there's six type of curtains. Techelis, Vargamon, Tolan, Shani, Sheish, Mazor. Techelis is Kilion. Techelis means expiring to God. Kala, She'eri, Vulavavi. Like it says, my soul and my heart are expiring to you, God. Ein much do like it says somewhere else, etc., etc., etc. Hine, gam kein also kedimion sheyesh la adam. A person also has bones. Right? You got bones. Most people have bones. Bones. Your skeleton. And on the skeleton is meat and sinews and things that cover over the bones. This level, the bones. That's like the pillars that are standing. That's the basis of everything. That on them is your flesh and your body. All of my bones will <clears throat> are screaming out to you, God. The bones, that's surrendering yourself to God. Circle at bottom, calling them, this has to be. And from this, you can come afterwards, the <clears throat> meat and you can have a personality. So first of all, you have to realize, listen, anything that I am, everything that I think, all of my egotism, that the whole world is stressing so much, you gotta be an egotist and you have to be a bigger egotist and a better egotist, and then you'll succeed and you'll be a big shot and a big man, you'll be a star and you'll be famous. And that's, a, right? that's all wrong, it's a big mistake. It's a big mistake. It's a wonderful to be a big star, to have billions of dollars to this, but that's not the purpose why we're here. Those things, those things have to ensue, not to be pursued. They have to ensue, have to be a result of your wanting to reveal all of your potential because that's what God wants. But first of all, when you're in the wrong direction, <clears throat> you're in the wrong direction, so you have to stop. That's the thing of like the bones. That's the, the pillars that are standing. And on this basic fear that I don't want to do what's wrong is built love. Right? That you're always... Checking yourself, I don't want to do what's wrong. And that is built, I yes, do want to do what's right. I want to be totally enthusiastic. That's how the Tanya starts off. <clears throat> you have to be always wary, beware of your own egotism, your selfishness, no matter how great you are, no matter how wonderful you are. But on the other hand, that's just the basis of it. The main thing is to do good, to do good to others. And that's the thing of the pillars, which are carried by Marori, which means bitterness, and Gershon, which is the service of B'nai Gershon. That's love carrying these, uh, the, 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 um, I say, the cloths, the tapestries, which covered over the tabernacle and which made the whole courtyard, which surrounded the courtyard. Let's just do another five minutes. Hine, Babur Hashem's serving God in prayer. Yesh bitla ratzon, we have to have both these things also. We didn't get to what is kahat going to be yet. Kahat is going to be the upper fear. We'll talk about that later. That's right in the end. Kahat, they carry, they're the ones that carry the vessels. Let's go back. First of all, you have to 
how do you say, surrender yourself, wipe yourself out. Don't trust yourself. Break your heart, like it says. <clears throat> In prayer, there's also these two things. First of all, it has to be his aros yura. You have to have the lower fear. That's psuki de zimra. You realize how great God is, and God's creating the world, and I'm not creating anything. And God is enlivening everything, and he's creating me, and I'm not enlivening anything. And God is providing for all being and the angels and everything, and I'm not providing for anything, right? It's just lucky if there's food in the in the in that I have a job. It's all miracles. And nevertheless, I think I'm God. Nevertheless, I think I'm the boss. I'm not doing anything with God, what God does, and I think that I'm God. How can that be? Because I'm making a mistake, and that's what's called the lower fear. And it's so much fun to make this mistake. It feels so good. You feel really just like you're just flying high, top of the world. But the fact of the matter is, is it's a mistake, right? To have self-confidence is wonderful. You have to, to be brave, to be happy, to be joyous. All these things that are associated with egotism, they're really good things, but they're just being misused. They're being hijacked by our own egotism. The fact of the matter is all these things are gifts of God and God is creating us. God is infinitely good, infinitely close, infinitely real. And he wants us to have these things, but he wants to, us to realize that they're his, they're not ours. The world is God's world, it's not our world. And that's what we say when we say Pesukit Zimra. Pesukit Zimra, these are Psalms of King David that praise God, how great God is, how God is providing for everything, he's enlivening everything. <clears throat> and then there's also the book called The Blessings of Yotzer Or. It talks about the angels. How the angels are already, they're in awe and they're in fear and they're negating themselves to God. And after that, you come to love. <clears throat> God is so awesome. God is so everything. God is so this. I'm so bad. I'm so low. I'm so this. But God loves me. He's creating me. That that I'm bad is my own decision. Just stop making that stupid decision. And, and you'll see how good you are. That's all you have to do. That's the idea of prayer. First of all, appreciating God and how great God is and having fear of God and realizing that I'm not God. And after that, you come to a tremendous love of God that that's really what God wants is this love. How do you come to this love of God? You don't see him. You don't feel him. He's the bone and Use your mind. When you say, Abat Olam, you say that God loves us forever. Shema Yisrael. Contemplate, Jews, contemplate. Think. This is what's called hechalahava. This makes a chamber for love. And it draws from what's called the chamber of love in the upper worlds. Perish Shema, what does it mean? Shema Yisrael, that's the motto of Judaism. It means understand, think, take a second. Think about how good God is, how much God loves us, how precious we are in God's eyes. This is <clears throat> his bone in his thinking. After you have this lower fear, then you can think about the greatness of God. How, all, how, it is that, oh, 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 how it is that all the worlds, in the upper heaven, the in the lower heaven, and also what's going to be in the future, the revelation of the Mashiach, the raising of the dead. And all of these worlds, it's called those 3,000 yuvals. This is Kabbalistic levels. And all of these worlds, the upper worlds, the highest of the upper worlds, with all the angels even above the angels, that the whole entire business is just one thought of God in front of God's essence. That's why we're praising God. You know how many trees there are in the world? You know how many planets there are in the world? How many system, the solar systems and galaxies and suns? And those are nothing compared to the angels. You know how many angels there are in the world? The whole world is going crazy about UFOs, UFOs. Angels are infinitely more powerful and frightening and whatever it is dangerous, what you want to call it, than any UFO could possibly be. And God is creating the whole entire business. Like it says, God so full, maybe is that call adoro that God looked with one shot on the, all of the creation, the whole entire thing. With one thought, God created the world. For instance, one thought that a person has in his mind, this is just like a garment. For, for his soul, how much more so by God? This God's thoughts are not my thoughts. That's what it means that God is a king and he puts on a garment of highness, greatness. Namely, that, that which rose up in God's thought, that God wants to create a world, of, not just a physical world, 
also the spiritual worlds, also the worlds that are preparing for the spiritual worlds, all these worlds, Atzilus, Bria, Atzira, and this, in order that that God should be a king on the world, all this is one thought. So if so, if all the worlds are great and we should think about how great the world is, I think I said this about 50 times already, but somebody came from, there was one the Hasid Chabad, Professor Green of, of blessed memory, and he worked for NASA and he went to the Rebbe, he, his project that he was working on was, is there life on Mars? And he asked the Rebbe if it was permissible to do, the Rebbe said exactly the opposite. It's a wonderful thing. If there's life on Mars, it shows that God is also creating people on Mars. We have to appreciate everything there is in the world, but we have to appreciate that it's all creations. And even the spiritual levels with the angels, as great as they are, we have to appreciate them and be aware of how infinitely small and nothing and insignificant that we are in relation to the upper worlds. And all the upper worlds, us concluded with all the angels, is nothing insignificant, nothing regarding to God. But this God who is infinitely real, infinitely meaningful, he's creating us. He's creating me and you. He's creating everything. The trees and the animals, they don't appreciate it. The angels appreciate it. Human beings can appreciate it. We have free will. Angels don't have free will. <clears throat> Therefore, we have to think about this, <clears throat> that all of the worlds, all of them, Mahavi and the Yeshmi Ayan, are created from God by means of God's will. If so, in order that we can have this will, this is what we're supposed to think about in order to love God. <clears throat> so in order for God, who is so infinitely I mean, it's not even real. God doesn't really exist. He creates all existence, spiritual, physical. In order for God to create these worlds, it just puts on a garment. And this garment, that's like the thing we learned about with Gershon, that he has all these tapestries and this. That's the garment of love. That's what it means. God is a king. He puts on a garment of greatness. Namely what? This is God's will, God's thought that creates, that, that is part of the creation of the world. But God himself, all these worlds and everything, it's just a garment. This brings us to a tremendous love of God. <clears throat> this brings a tremendous love of God. And this is what we're going to talk about more, God willing, tomorrow. Thank God we I, I was able to, to discover this amazing discovery. For some reason, this site is cut off, this whole thing, this wonderful, amazing site, which is called Hebrew Books, which has all of the Chabad books and also all the other books. I mean, thousands of books. The man who did it should be blessed for, forever. Incredible. For some reason, you can't access it on my, this, and on my cellular phone, I accessed it. So I think, okay, good, wonderful. Thank you. Thank God for this class. And I hope to see you all at three o'clock for the Chumash class.